Hello, I picked up one of these SIM 808 modules recently to see if I could get it working with my Arduino car tracker that I made last year. And last year's version I did with the SIM 900 and I didn't really know too much about these SIM modules at the time so I just got that one and tried it out and it worked. And it basically just uses a GPS module to read in the current location and it posts the results of that to a web server to keep track of that in the database. And after I put that video up last year, it's actually a sequence of videos that, that was like the finale of the sequence of videos. So what I'm going to talk about here is kind of a follow on to that. So I'll put links to those videos in the description and you might have to go and check those out to even begin to understand some of what's going on here. But anyway, after I put that video up, I got a lot of questions from people asking if I could do it with a SIM 808. And by that time I'd sort of... Uh, done my dash and I'd sort of had enough of the sim modules for a while so I couldn't be bothered doing anything about it. But recently I realized why they were saying that and it's because these actually have a GPS capability in them already and my <laughs> GPS car tracker that I made last year <coughs> I had to use an external GPS module so there was lots and lots of wiring and it got really messy quite quickly but this is a relatively tidy build. It's just stuck on a piece of um, flight test foam board at the moment. And um, anyway, long story short, I got it working. Wasn't really too much to change. Um, so I thought I'd make a video and just share a little bit about it and maybe just look at the basic differences and then a little bit of differences in the source code. And that's probably going to be it. Shouldn't be too long video because most of the details to be explained are already explained in the previous videos. Uh, so this module, of course, being um, since it has the GPS in it, uh, under my thumb here, you don't need any GPS to connect to it, but you will need an antenna. Uh, I got this on Banggood, I think it was about $17, and this was a few dollars, and then uh, Arduino's a few dollars, and then this is a, uh, I think it can do up to about 26 volts input down to, well I've set it to 5, it's adjustable, uh, but the point of having this power supply is that you do need a fairly decent current supply to send the uh, cell phone signals, so you need 2 amps capable power supply, so that's why I'm using that rather large one there, and I'm using that to power the Arduino Pro Mini there as well. Uh, another thing you'll have to get for this module is a GSM antenna, which I don't think came with it. Um, about a month ago I got this and I'm a little bit foggy on what it, how it was all arranged but I'll put the links to all the stuff in the description if you want to use these same pieces uh, and the SIM card goes in there as before as well. Between the SIM module and the Arduino we have just ground and RX and TX so there's a whole lot of wiring that you do not even need and previously I had my Arduino connected up to the GPS module separately so there's lots of wiring and lots of code can be just removed completely. Uh, and another thing that makes this a lot tidier than my build last year is that I'm not using an LCD screen. The LCD screen was really, really useful during the debugging stages, but I had a bit of trouble. I tried to use an OLED screen for this, and I, I just couldn't really get it working without interfering with all the other stuff. So I just took it out completely, given that I don't really need to do too much debugging now. And fortunately, it uh, all just worked. So let me connect up, I'm going to unplug this from the Arduino. So on here I just have a ground and RX and TX. And I'm going to plug the power in to this module and I'm going to connect it up to my uh, computer. And you can see just on there, the LED in the middle is just power I think, and then the one on the right is the self cellular network status. It flashes quickly like this when it first starts, but after a little bit it should flash slowly. So this is the same as the SIM 900 modules. It should have, it should have gained signal. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now it's flashing slowly. We have a connection to the cellular network. And the LED on the right is the GPS and when you have a GPS lock or a, well at least when you have the time coming through uh, you'll see that flashing once per second 
So I'm just going to put this down on the floor and <laughs> connect it to my computer and we'll have a look at what the differences are in the SIM 808 that let you use GPS. Alright, so I've connected up the RX and TX directly to an FTDI adapter. So I'm going to um, talk to that directly using the serial monitor like this. Hopefully that should work. It's not working. Why is it not working? Uh, oh, that's working now. Alright. Sometimes you've got to do this AT thing more than once. Anyway, it seems to be alright now. Uh, so there is a bunch of documentation that you can look at that um, I'm probably not going to look at too much in here because there's not much to it, but um, this documentation here, GNSS application note, is actually separate to the main AT command document that you get for these SIM modules. It's sort of an add-on, and I actually didn't even look at the main document because it, everything was working, so I just assumed that everything was okay. Uh, but what I'm going to look at here is this GNS power. This is to turn the power off and on to the GPS module part of the module. So sort of a module within a module, so to speak. Uh, and the other one I'm going to look at is GNS inf and also look at GNS test. So I don't think we'll... Oh, we might come back to that document a little bit. But let's just see what we get when we do CGNS power. And I'll just query this value to begin with, like that, and it says it's zero. So let me just uh, set it to one. Now this is the power to the GPS, so you can save power by not running the GPS actually, because the GPS actually uses a fair bit of power. So it starts up in the off state, but we can turn it on like this and then if I query that again we should see that it is on okay so now it's on uh, and we can do GNS test this is also a 0 or 1 uh, boolean value and if we set this to 1 we'll see now I'm not doing anything but we're getting a bunch of NMEA sentences being spewed out. So this is um, not really that useful because you would then have to read this in and pass it and in order to do something useful with it. So let's just turn it off. Test equals zero. Now the nice thing about the SIM 808 module is that it does all the passing of these NMEA sentences for you and it dishes that up to you whenever you ask for it. So you're not going to be confronted with these sentences spewing into your Arduino and taking up memory all the time. You can just get a more concise format of data when you, as you need it. And that was the CGNS inf. Uh, and I think you just do that. Yeah, there we go. So what this will give you uh, is a comma separated list of values like so and you can see this one here is a date well <laughs> I guess you can't unless you know it's a date but anyway now that you know it's a date you can see it says 1980 uh, and we'll just go back to that document to look at uh, CGNS inf is the GNSS navigation information passed from the NMEA sentences so the execution command that you do as we just saw is that without any parameters and then the response is going to be this followed by a big long list of things so that's run status, fixed status, date and time, latitude, longitude and if you just go down to the next page and we've got MSL alt altitude, speed over ground, course over ground, blah 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 so there's a whole bunch of things and this was that big comma separated list of stuff that we saw just before uh, there's a little bit more info here so run status is either 0 or 1. Uh, I guess that just tells you whether the GPS power is on or off. I uh, didn't think to check that. Fixed status is 0 or 1. Uh, date and time is what we just saw there, the 1980. And then latitude and longitude. So all of these will be in that comma separated list of values. And if we just go back here and try it again, something might have changed. Uh, 
Um, I still don't see the LED flashing, so we probably don't have a lock. But we do have the change in the date. So now we have at least managed to get the correct date. So it's January 7th, uh, 1636 Greenwich Mean Time, I think that is. Uh, and this, whatever that is, is updated as well. <laughs> So anyway, you can see that this is how you would have to deal with the GPS data to make use of it in your Arduino program. So let's go on with that. Uh, and I'm just going to assume that the viewer is a little bit familiar with the GPS tracker program that I made and explained last year. I didn't really explain it fully, but um, if anybody is thinking about making something like this, they're probably going to have to have looked at it already. So I'll just show you the little bits that are different. Um, actually, a lot, of it, a lot of it is actually just missing. Uh, so differences are here. The URL that you call on my website if you want to post your journey is going to have to have a 2 in it. So previously it was just this gt.php. Now you're going to have to put a 2 in there because there's a slightly different information coming in. For example, originally there was a horizontal accuracy figure which is not provided by the SIM 808. So unfortunately it gives you an HDOP but um, I decided not to put that in the database. It wasn't really that useful. Uh, so that's one change and in the... okay let's have a look at this SIM 808 setup because I put that in this other tab. Uh, so here we are here, SIM 808 setup. We need to do at the beginning CGNS power equals 1. That's what I just showed you. This will turn the GPS module on so that it's going to be running. Uh, the rest of this stuff is unchanged. Oh, and I had to do this, for some reason it didn't do it. I think it might have done it okay after I put that delay in, but I decided to do the CGNS power equals 1 again after all this stuff because I found that one time when I did it, it didn't get recognized. So maybe it was doing it too early here. It hadn't managed to start up some of the things that it needed to start up to be ready. Anyway, so do CGNS power equals 1 twice. Um, and then in this SIM 808 loop, which is called from the main loop, let's just go to the main loop again. Uh, so inside the main loop function, I've added this SIM 808 loop, and that is going to check if five seconds has passed, and if five seconds has passed, then it's going to call CGNS inf which will prompt the SIM module to give us that comma-separated list of values every five seconds. And the GPS results are posted to the server every 10 seconds, so I guess we don't really need to do it every five seconds. We could do it every 10 seconds. would be probably good enough, but that seems to work. Uh, I noticed you can't do this too quickly. I think I tried to do it once every second, and that just didn't work. So it's not... <laughs> this ain't a UBX protocol speedy kind of 10 hertz thing. This is a relatively slow system. Um, so anyway, we'll, when we issue the CGNS inf command, we are going to get that huge comma separated list of values. And um, this is starting to get a little bit detailed really, but um, in one of the previous videos I explained how this all works. So at any given time we are in some state where we're actually doing something and we're expecting a certain result to come back from the SIM module. So for example we have um, initially we start in the detecting message type state so this is like the idle state and sometimes we're expecting an HTTP action result to come back and sometimes we're expecting the length of the content then the content itself and so on so depending on whatever state we're in, we're going to take a different action when we receive a byte from the SIM module. So to handle that large comma-separated list of values, I had to add a very long sequence of states. And essentially this is one state per p 
piece of that comma separated thing so for every comma in here there should be something or other in here so we have run status fixed status time lat long meters above sea level I think that was something uh, and down in here this is where it all happens this is the pass at text function and this is going to take one byte of data and do something with it depending on what state we're in at the current time so if we go down to here this is where the new section of code has been added for this function so for all of those states that we just looked at um, we're going to just get rid of that for a second uh, depending on which one of those we are expecting to come in uh, most cases we're going to just ignore them but for a handful of ones that we're interested in for example fixed status lat long and so on uh, we're going to pass those in and maybe use a to i to convert them to an integer or something like that depending on what they are uh, and then at the end of that we increment the pass state so that next time we come through this loop uh, we will be looking for the next one of these so if we were looking for h dot this time next time we're going to be looking for p dot uh, and this only happens if we encounter a comma so this probably sounded extremely confusing if you just watch this without having seen how I explained this hopefully a little bit better in one of my previous videos but this bit there that I just showed you is the only new code that needed to be added to make this work so I don't want to go too much on with this um, I was hoping to make a short video for this since most of the details is already explained as I said in those other videos um, what else is there to say actually I don't think there is anything else to say now but um, before we finish I'll just show you some of the results of this because it's kind of a boring video if we're just looking at source code all the time it's nice to see what we get for all this work and you can see this is an example of when I drove into Hamilton to do my Christmas shopping you can see it's the 21st of December the horizontal accuracy number there is going to be zero every time for this one uh, it's just uh, just the way I've did it I couldn't be bothered doing anything with that H dot number and interesting interestingly I found that the H dot number that this module gives you is not always a nicely formed floating point number so it's usually 0 0.9 or something like that or 1.0 or whatever but occasionally it would give me a number with two decimal dots in it so it would be 0 0.9.1 and that screwed up my PHP on the server a little bit so I just commented out <laughs> and for that reason the HACC is just going to be 0 anyway you can see I was doing 79 kilometers an hour there with nine satellites at uh, 5:40 p.m. and I drove in here to do some shopping and miracle of miracles I actually got a car park right there on what is probably one of the busiest days of the year it was a Thursday so it was late night shopping anyway um, <laughs> that's how it looks when it all works and again I'll just have to direct you to the previous video where I explained how to do this for yourself and how to set up your own URL to get your data showing up in this. Um, so that's all I have for now. I'll put the links to the source code in the description box below. Thanks for watching.